National Motocross Series. Looking for some great racing here at the Buds Creek Motocross Park. Hello everyone, I'm Jan Bikas. Damon Bradshaw is concentrating on that comeback tour, so joining us is David Bailey, former motocross champion. Now, you've won a lot of races, but never a 125 Outdoor National. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. I, I wish I could have, but uh, I bursted on the scene rather quickly, and Honda decided not to waste my talents in the 125. Put me right into the Supercross and 250 Nationals, and fortunately in my first year I was able to win both, so it's pretty, pretty lucky on both our parts. Nowadays, they are putting the heavyweights in 125. We have a very close championship battle. Damon Huffman leads it. About 15 points in front, but today, 90 degrees, it's hot. Who will be tough? Well, you can never count out the points leader, Damon Huffman, obviously doing something right up to this point, and uh, I think the track is in his favor. It's kind of Supercross style, but it's hot and humid, as you mentioned, and, and the riders that are in the best physical condition, I think, will shine today, and riders like uh, Steve Lampson, obviously very fit, and also uh, Ryan Hughes, he's a fighter. We know Ryan Hughes is a fighter. There's a lot of fighters out there today here at Bud's Creek. Let's take a look at the racetrack. Well, it's tough to tell from here. It looks flat, but this track is very hilly, up, down, up, down, in and out of the woods, a lot of big jumps, kind of like a huge supercross track, and a steep uphill start. Let's check in with Art Ekman. Six different riders have moto wins in six tries this year, but the points leader, Damon Huffman, has yet to win an overall or a moto. Damon, I suppose this means finishing in the top four is the answer. Well, so far, the top four has been where I've been, you know, every week so far, but I'm still looking for that first moto win in the first overall, and I think it'll come soon. Hopefully, it'll happen here at Bud's Creek. Even though you do have a double-digit points lead, there are a lot of guys out there that could mess up the works, even uh, veteran Steve Lampson, who's coming off injuries, and, of course, that spectacular crash at Mount Morris. There's a lot of guys like Lampson and Pashan, Barry, even Wyndham's back now, so... It's going to be uh, tough the rest of the year. What about the track out there now, Damon? Well, the track's really fast today, and uh, it's really wide, and the dirt's really good. Um, it's going to be good for a whole lot of passing going on. Well, that means a lot of bar banging with the way the 125s are going. Jan, back to you. Thanks, Art. We're getting ready for the start of moto number one. That's Ryan Hughes getting his machine warmed up. Certainly one of the guys, David, you think will be strong here in this heat. Oh, I think so. And no, it's not rain. They've got these umbrellas out there to protect these riders right up to the last minute from all the heat. It's very hot and, more importantly, humid. The umbrellas come out in IndyCar racing to keep those drivers cool in the cockpit. And here on the outdoors, you can see the steam coming off the bikes and the steam coming off there. Steve Lampson hoping to repeat. He's our defending champion. Pichon, you think he'll be strong? He'll definitely be strong. And he won the second moto at Mount Morris in our last race. This kid is, uh, I don't think he has a lot of confidence in himself, but he's definitely got a lot of talent, and he's very consistent. One of the places he has struggled has been right here on the start. Look at that uphill start. This will mean everything. Everyone gets away cleanly so far. Let's see who gets the whole shot. A lot of congestion in the back. You see one of the riders cutting all the way across the field. That's 36, Chad Pedersen with the whole shot. Mike Brown, there's Lampson in fourth place. Good start for him, but Chad Pedersen screams out of the gate. Well, I don't think any of these guys, other than maybe Mike Brown right there, actually Tim Ferry with a good start too. So, Lampson with a good start. I don't see Huffman, uh, Ryan Hughes really close to him, and that's going to be good news for Lampson. Hopefully, uh, I think he's got the speed to move past these guys and possibly open up a good lead. We saw Hughes there sort of in the middle of the pack, but we did not see Huffman up until this point. So he right now is buried. Chad Pedersen, number 36 from Fort Dodge, Iowa at the moment, holding down the first spot. Usually what happens is when a privateer gets the hole shot, he's not capable of running the pace of the faster guys. So he kind of holds up the show and then sort of creates sort of a freight train uh, situation and allows everyone to stay close. And right now, it's a great battle between for second place with Ferry and Mike Brown. Ferry and Mike Brown have dueled before. They're side by side. Looks like Brown has the advantage at the moment. At Sacramento and in Mount Morris, these guys were duking it out for position. Both very fast men. You can see that the, the track is fairly dry here, but they've put some water on it. And going into that corner when they were side by side, uh, getting pretty sideways and it also messes up your vision in the beginning of the race so it's, you kind of want to stay out of the roost of the guys in front of you and it takes a lap or two for most guys to settle into a comfortable pace and get used to the track how easy do you have to take it david on that first lap not really being sure how much they've watered some of these turns well it, that's one of the things that guys uh, don't really like to do is get the whole shot and have to 
you know, have all that pressure. They have to go fast. There's no choice. They can't hold back. But a guy like Lampson, he can sit back there, watch this battle sort of unfold, and then slowly start to make his move. At the moment, Chad Pedersen holds out the first place. Brown, Ferry, Lampson, and Hughes rounding out the top five. Wyndham, LaRusso, Pingree, Pichon, and Reynard. We'll be back to see how this one finishes out. AMA Motocross on ESPN2 is brought to you by Honda, defending champions and holders of the past seven consecutive Supercross titles. Honda, come ride with us. This is a 1-800-COLLECT call. From hey, this is your son, Jeremy. Your son, Jeremy. Trying to be funny? <laughs> I've been eating pretty good. Doug and I were just hanging out. I'm not an actor. What am I doing? Jeff's doing good. He says to say hi. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Steve says to say hi. Hi, Mom and Dad. Say what? I think we're going to take it tonight. No, I'd rather have it on your bill than mine. I'm getting ready to go race right now. Mom, guess what? We just won the championship again. Welcome back to Bud's Creek, Maryland. David Bailey and Jan Vikas here in the booth. Art Ekman down in the pits. Tony LaRusso holding down fifth place, number 67. Right behind him, Mikhail Pichon, 101. They're out of sight of our leaders right now, but Pichon gets faster and faster as the race continues and uh, starting to put the pressure on LaRusso right here. Maybe starting to feel the pressure from Kevin Windham, who we just got a glimpse of, who's catching up to Pichon right now. LaRusso looking over his shoulder. He's 23 years old on that Suzuki, but right now it looks like Pichon takes the inside, gets the drive, and takes the position. Nice move by Pichon. They're both looking at each other in the air as they go off the jump. Make sure they got enough space and... Uh, Pichon, as I mentioned, gets faster and faster as the race wears on. He's, now he's got a rider between himself and Wyndham. That uh, LaRusso will probably act as a little pad right there, so possibly Pichon can relax and just focus on the riders ahead of him now. You mentioned Pichon actually doesn't like to get a good start. He described it to me as that he's just tentative in that first turn. But that really, if you start a little further back, it kind of takes the pressure off because you're always moving forward. Sure. You see riders that uh, crash in the first turn. They put on a spectacular ride, move all the way up to, say, a second or a third, and then the next moto, they'll hole shot and still end up in a second or a third. So right there, it tells you that uh, they have a, a belief of where they feel like they deserve to finish in the race. And it takes more pressure to do it from the hole shot a lot of times, and some guys just aren't comfortable with it, but Pichon has the speed to catch these guys and plenty of time to do it. Mike Brown, number 26 you're looking at on the Honda, Honda of Troy. Now here's a guy who did get a great start, is being able so far to handle the pressure, and he looks like he's drawing away from Ferry. He's starting to pull a little bit away from Ferry, but also uh, Ryan Hughes is starting to catch up, so possibly Ferry's just fading, and Brown's running the same pace. Tim Ferry might be fading slightly, but certainly he's one of these guys that's in the points championship fight. Art Ekman is with his mechanic. It's been a good progression for Tim. His first moto win in one race, and in the next race, his first overall win. The maturity in that lead pack and the confidence he's gained is certainly showing today. Yeah, this is the first time he's uh, had a chance to run up front with these guys this year. And uh, like you say, the first moto win helped him a lot. And then the national win at Mount Morris was great. Really boosted his confidence, and it's really helping him now. Now he can go to the start line knowing that he has a chance to win. I have a feeling if you're not in the lead pack, uh, you'd have a hard time winning this one. Yeah, this track is really fast, and uh, as you can see, those guys are all going about the same speed, so it's going to take either a mistake or someone to really charge hard to get past those leaders. No mention from Lee McCollum about possibly Tim Ferry fading because we can see here that really the interval has stayed about the same. Possibly Ryan Hughes there on the Kawasaki number nine. Possibly he's closing in there on that second spot. We see him just come into the picture there. Sometimes what you'll see happen is these guys have a section of the racetrack where they do a little better than others and uh, it'll look like he's gaining time. Then they get over to the other section of the track and it actually uh, the, the gap opens back up. So. Uh, right here, it seems like, uh, like his mechanic said, they're all running about the same pace, and I wouldn't look for anybody to make any uh, real substantial move until later stages of the race. Tim Ferry from Palm Harbor, Florida. Art was mentioning those stats. He won his first moto this year in the outdoors in Sacramento. 
then went 2-2 at Mount Morris for the overall victory. So this guy certainly is gaining his confidence. Well, lots of confidence here. I, I like his riding style. He looks like he's riding pretty relaxed and possibly conserving energy, knowing how hot it is and that it will take its toll later in the day. Tim Ferry, 20 years old, a youngster, hasn't been 20 that long. Certainly a lot of potential for him to come. Look, he's closing the gap down on the lead here. We thought maybe he was fading, but maybe he was doing exactly what you said, David, saving energy. Now it looks like he's turning up the wick. Well, right now he's definitely close enough to Mike Brown to put the pressure on. I mentioned before that he really hadn't hadn't done that. But now I think Mike Brown is feeling the heat. And anytime you got a guy closing on you like that, you start to ride uh, a little more tense and start to make mistakes. And once the rider behind you can see that, it just gives them that much more confidence. They just went through a couple of corners that you see here on a natural terrain motocross track. You don't see in Supercross, and that's the off-camber downhill. That's when you have to be really cautious, and that's like right here. The guys really need that berm to get the kind of cornering they want, don't they? Right. Well, you saw what happened to Lampson earlier. He overshot that berm and uh, boy, lost a lot of time in the process and a position to Ryan Hughes. And Ryan Hughes, although these guys are running a pretty fast pace, Ryan's right there, and uh, I think he's possibly waiting until later stages of the race to make his move. Ryan Hughes has closed the gap. You saw just briefly there Steve Lampson coming into the picture. So the top four right now, very, very close together. Brown, Ferry, Hughes, and Lampson will just pop into view there. There's our top four. And Jan, these guys still maintaining about the same distance between each other. And as the race gets to a close, I would look for something to start happening. There's no way these guys are just going to ride it with this separation. Ryan Hughes appears as though he's gaining time on these guys in the tight stuff, but right now everyone still looks pretty smooth and fresh. Mike Brown on his Honda holds down the lead as we check the Suzuki field summary. Mike Brown, Tim Ferry, Ryan Hughes, Steve Lampson, Mikhail Pichon are the top five. The second five, Raynard LaRusso, Wyndham Pingree, and Damon Huffman still mired in 10th place. Welcome back to Bud's Creek, Maryland. You're looking at a battle for the lead. Tim Ferry on the Suzuki trying to go the inside of the Honda there of Mike Brown. Boy, it's got tight at the front. Tim Ferry has turned the wick up. He sure has, and he's definitely putting the pressure on Brown. Brown's starting to ride defensive, and uh, once a guy does that, it gives the rider behind him more confidence. So I think it's important for Ferry to keep that pressure on, try to get around him, and that's going to make it tough for uh, either Lampson or or Ryan Hughes to try to get up there and challenge uh, Tim Ferry. We heard from Ferry's mechanic earlier. There was the halfway sign from the flagger. Right now, Ferry trying to put the pressure, trying to get a mistake. Another guy who's been strong has been Ryan Hughes, and Art Ekman has made his way to the mechanics area with Wyatt Seals. Wyatt, he's got the good start he's been looking for. Where is he going to make his move now? This is not an easy track. No, definitely not. It's a really fast track. Um, there seems to be one or two fast lines. I mean, I'd have to say for Ryan, probably one of the big downhills, you know, where it's just going to require a lot of guts. Just hold the throttle on. I think it's safe to say that any place on the racetrack where it requires a lot of guts to make a move would be a good place for Ryan Hughes to do it. Ryan Hughes, one of the more aggressive riders on the series. And look at Mike Brown. He had a bit of a challenge a few laps ago from number 23, the Suzuki of Tim Ferry. But he's responded. He's grabbed the throttle. He squirted back out again. Now, you think this is Brown picking it up? Or do you think Ferry will just kind of all of a sudden make a run at him to try and make him make a mistake? Well, he's made a run at him, and he, he couldn't make anything happen. And uh, sometimes you get frustrated. You use a lot of energy and, and take a couple of chances to pick up the pace to put the pressure on somebody. And when they respond like that, it uh, kind of takes the wind out of your sails, and you got to drop back and regroup. But Ryan Hughes is lurking back there, and uh, I think Ferry feels the need to try to get up there and make a pass on Brown. Now we're seeing a battle between Kawasaki's 101, Mikhail Pichon, who of course rides for Pro Circuit. Behind him was Robbie Raynard, the factory Kawasaki pilot. Here's a couple of guys, one on a Honda, one on a Suzuki, still battling at the front. Now, David, you talked about he made a run. That is, Ferry made a run here on 26, Mike Brown. How much energy does that really take to all of a sudden just close a gap here of a couple of seconds? Well, it could have been a possibility that uh, Brown made a mistake or two, which allowed Ferry to get close and to get in there and make Brown nervous but Brown has been pretty solid. He hasn't shown any weakness right now, and uh, if he does show a weakness and Ferry's able to capitalize on that, Ryan Hughes is right back there, close enough to see what's going on and possibly make the same move. 
We're looking back and forth at the two battles on the racetrack, here for the lead, and then back to two Kawasaki's further back in the pack, battling amongst themselves. You can see that Ryan Hughes in third place is still in contest. Lampson hanging in there. Of course, Lampson's the defending champion. I'm surprised we haven't seen him closer at the front. Well, Lampson's pretty smart. He won't take any unnecessary chances, and this pace is fast enough. I don't think he can really get up there and do anything. It looks like the only rider on the move right now would be uh, Robbie Rayner, who's moved up to challenge Pichon for uh, the number five position. And it's surprising to me that Damon Huffman is still so far back in the pass. Damon Huffman, of course, is the number one factory pilot for Suzuki. Number 23 there on the yellow Suzuki also is his teammate. But our points leader, Damon Huffman, right now still stuck in 10th place. That surprises me that he's back there still. It doesn't surprise me to see the guy, you know, get a bad start and have to work his way from 10th. But to be back there this long just leads me to believe he's just not riding that well in this moto. And uh, possibly he can make some changes to the motorcycle or maybe to himself uh, in his motivation and maybe finding better lines and do better in the second moto. But right now, Tim Ferry uh, reminds me a lot of, of the way Damon Huffman rides. Kind of the same style. He's very smooth. And uh, you can, if you watch his body, it doesn't move around very much. He saves a lot of energy out there. Tim Ferry broke his jaw this year after a big crash coming off a triple at the Houston Supercross. He had it wired shut for four weeks, then came back here his first time out at a national outdoor event. And man, he just didn't miss a beat. Well, when you're 20 years old, uh, you're pretty resilient. You're able to bounce back from that stuff. It's still, you know, pretty early in his career and a lot to prove and uh, doing a good job of it right now. Tim Ferry, when he did break his jaw, it was a horrifying crash. How hard is it to put that out of your mind, David? Well, he had enough time uh, with his jaw wired shut to think about other things. He probably, probably forgot about the crash itself. And it's tough to come back because uh, you, you lose some fitness. But you get your riding skills back pretty quick and... Uh, you know, the only thing he really had to do was just get some timing and endurance, and that seems to be coming pretty natural. It comes natural to him. He's closing down on the lead. The best battle on the racetrack, as it's been all year here, is in 125, and it's for the lead. Checking the Suzuki field summary, Brown, Ferry, Hughes, Lampson, and Pichon, the second five show that Huffman still stuck in 10th. Who do? This edition of AMA Motocross on ESPN2 is brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has the ride you've been waiting for and the financing to get it. Welcome back to Bud's Creek. Jan Bikas, David Bailey in the booth, Art Ekman in the pits. We have a battle for the lead. We're in the final stages here of Moto Number 1, and again, Tim Ferry is putting the pressure on Mike Brown, but Mike Brown has handled this pressure really well, David. Well, it gets worse as it gets closer to the end of the race, though, and Ferry, he keeps making time in this off-camber section of the racetrack. Every time they go up into that tight left and uh, come in front of the main spectator area, he's always right there, right there into the inside. Look at that move. Wow, you called it. He set up that pass beautifully. Tim Ferry goes to the inside. Mike Brown tries to cut back. He goes to the inside, tries for the block pass, but wasn't close enough. Well, Brown's a fighter. He's not willing to get up. A little mistake there by Ferry as he started down the hill. His foot came off the peg, and, uh, boy, this is close. Brown has got to hang with him here. He's got the speed. He's proven it the whole moto to stay with or run the pace of Ferry. But right now, Ferry, uh, he looks pretty motivated. I'm taking a look back at the uh, pass. Mike Brown just goes to the outside, leaves the door wide open, and Ferry this time was close enough to go in there and chop off that line, a textbook block pass. He takes away that line. Brown couldn't get on the power as hard as he wanted. Of course, Brown didn't give up, tried to take it back with another block pass of his own, but it wasn't to be. Tim Ferry right now holding down the lead. Well, Tim Ferry has been close enough the whole race uh, within striking distance to make a pass. And as I mentioned, probably in the later stages of the race is when somebody was going to make a move. He made his move. And uh, looks like he's going to make it stick. Brown already is dropping off the pace. Mike Brown giving it everything he had now that Ferry has gone through. Kind of zapped your confidence, doesn't it? No, it sure does, Jan. And these guys have been so close the whole race. When you're, when you're that close in riding ability, then it really just becomes a psychological game. And right now, uh, I think Ferry holds the upper hand. Looking back in the pack, you're looking at Kevin Windham on a Yamaha, and there's Damon Huffman. For the first time today, we've seen him. He's trying to move through. Now maybe we can take a look and find out why he's been stuck so far back in the pack. Well, Windham is uh, coming off injuries as well and trying to make his adjustment back into riding this fast pace. A little bit off the pace, though, today, and Huffman 
really has no excuse. Uh, he, you know, he hasn't won a moto and he hasn't won an overall. I really expect to see him do that here pretty soon, hold the points lead, but he just doesn't seem to have it all together and possibly a bad start. He just got stuck into riding the other rider's pace and uh, really couldn't do much with it. But check this out. Here comes Steve Lampson trying to go to the inside of Mike Brown. He does it. He takes second place. Mike Brown starting to drift back. Steve Lampson, our defending champion, moves through with a very important second place for him. Well, he just slingshot around that right-hand corner. Just stayed in the berm perfect, held the inside line. We're going to get another look at it right here. Look at him just lay into that berm. Just stole the line away from Mike Brown. I don't think Mike Brown really <laughs> thought that uh, Lampson was close enough to put a move on him like that, but Lampson nailed the corner and in the final lap right now and as you can see Mike Brown's already starting to look over his shoulder so he lost a lot of confidence in uh, having Ferry move around him like that maybe just a little bit tired here too in the later stages of the race. Steve Lampson taking advantage of the move that this man Tim Ferry made on Mike Brown and it really pays off for Lampson. This is another great as he takes the checkered flag finish for Tim Ferry winner of moto number one. The overall results on our Suzuki Field Summary, Barry Lampson, Brown, Pichon, and Reynard. In the second five, Hughes slips to sixth, Huffman up to seventh, Hearts with the winner. Congratulations, Tim Ferry. What was running through your mind when you were in second place now in, in analyzing where you would make the move? Uh, you know, at the beginning of the moto, I was wondering, you know, he was uh, going a good pace. You know, we are going about the same, and uh, it's really hard to pass. I knew they could buy him. It was gonna be, definitely have to be a dirty pass or a block pass or something really aggressive pass and uh, I tried it a few times but he uh, capitalized and finally about half, a little past halfway. I think he might have started messing up a little bit and uh, I took advantage of it. Boy, right after that finish line jump uh, was a perfect place to get inside. Yeah, it was. You know, we, I come up real close. I was the closest I got to him. I, I thought about trying a couple outs before but I figured not taking us both out. You know, I tried to make the safe pass and I did and it worked out for me. Second moto win of the year. Here comes Ferry. All right, thanks. We'll see how Tim Ferry fares in moto number two. Don't go anywhere. We have a full moto to go here at Bud's Creek. Welcome back to Bud's Creek, where we're getting ready for the start of moto number two. Ryan Hughes, the split fire pro circuit Kawasaki rider, getting ready for moto number two. And Art Ekman is there to talk with him. Ryan, as you get set to go for moto two now, uh, where did you pick up the flat tire? Did you realize it right away? Uh, I didn't, the bike was handling pretty good with the flat in the corners, some of the hard corners would get a little sideways. Um, my arms bumped up a little bit, but hey, I'm ready for this. We made a couple changes to the bike to make me a little bit more comfortable, so I'm ready. Well, if you can get the same start, it'll be a great one. Definitely. Good luck. Thanks. Well, bad luck for Ryan Hughes. Something we couldn't really tell from up here, but uh, doing a pretty good job of concealing that flat tire, and uh, that explains why he slipped back to sixth place. Tim Ferry, the winner of moto number one, gets ready. It's even hotter here for moto number two. You see some of those umbrellas, as we said before. It's not raining. They're trying to keep some of the sun off these riders, keep them as cool as possible till the last moment. The all-important start, very steeply uphill. The gate will drop towards the bikes. They're on the gas, clean so far. We'll see who gets the whole shot this time. Looks like Mike Brown again on the inside. Lampson was out there this time. A lot of congestion on the right side of the track. One rider down, looks like 171. That's Trey Owens of Moore, Oklahoma. He gets underway. Now we see the front of the field. Lampson we can see in the picture, but he's in second place. It is a Honda that got through. It looks like it was Brown. Mike Brown, once again, with an excellent start. Lampson up in there, and Pichon this time with a much better start. There's Ryan Hughes right behind him. Ryan Hughes, Chad Pedersen looking back through the field. Wow, we saw our winner of moto number one, Tim Ferry, was buried in the pack. I didn't even see where Damon Huffman was, so again, he's got a lot of work to do. Looking at two Hondas at the front, the Honda of Troy of Mike Brown, followed by Steve Lampson, who, of course, was second in moto number one. Mike Brown, again, he obviously has these starts dialed. Definitely, and that's uh, part of that's reaction, and a lot of it in the 125 class is horsepower, and Honda of Troy has got that bike running strong. We talked earlier that Mikhail Pichon right now in third position normally gets not good starts at all, but today he's got a great start. Now we'll have to see if he really has the speed to go to the front. Oh, well, he's pretty close to the front already, and now uh, I don't think this is the pressure that he feels of getting a hole shot. He's up there close where he needs to be in contact with these guys. Uh, however, he doesn't feel the pressure of somebody like Lampson or Brown, uh, who did so well in the first moto, breathing down his neck. 
We saw a brief glimpse of Ryan Hughes work his way past Chad Pedersen for position. But right now, we're keeping our eyes on this battle for first, second, and third. Third in the order, Mikel Pichon, we talked about, doesn't always go for the big aggressive start, likes to come through the field. We'll have to see what kind of pressure, as David talked about, it's a different type of pressure when you start up front. Well, I don't think he's going to feel too bad about this. That's, oh, and it, Mike Brown has gone down. He had his leg stuck underneath the motorcycle right there. And Steve Lanson finds himself with the lead now. And Pichon, uh, I think this is a real bonus for him. He's not going to have to worry about trying to get around Mike Brown. He proved to be tough to get around the first moto. So Pichon here with a great opportunity to possibly pick up a moto win. Cruel luck for Mike Brown. He had such a great start. He was aggressive. He went to the front. The front end slipped away, of course. They do water the racetrack before each one of these motos. And you can see a couple puddles there. That's what happens, isn't it, David? Your front end just catches something slick, and boy, the bike goes down. Well, it's tough to go from dry to slick, you know, back and forth like that. These riders do a pretty good job of it. After the first lap, all the bikes kind of spread that stuff around and mix it in, and it's not a problem after that. And I was just about to say that Mike Brown was in an excellent position to pick up an overall win, but now he's, uh, he's got a lot of riders in front of him. He's sort of buried in that pack, and there you got a glimpse of Tim Ferry, who's uh, only about a rider or two behind Mike Brown. Tim Ferry working his way through, but we did see number 26. Mike Brown got back up. Looked like maybe he was in about sixth spot, so he didn't lose too much. But look at this. This is a battle we have not seen this year. Steve Lampson on the Honda versus, oh, I was going to say that Mikhail Pichon was very close, but he cased it on that one. Well, he just uh, was a little bit offline right there. And Ryan Hughes gets by him now. He's, so that, that move obviously uh, shook Michael Pichon just for a brief moment and allowing uh, Ryan Hughes to capitalize. Steve Lampson, our leader. Boy, things change so fast here in 125. You have to say that the racing here in 125 last year and this year has been awesome. Oh, Pichon almost went down again. So possibly this is the pressure that uh, we talked about. Being up front, running a faster pace in the first couple of laps isn't something that Pichon is real comfortable with. He's going to have to figure it out sooner or later. And uh, right now... He's showing the effects of uh, that pressure, making a lot of mistakes. These guys are, of course, teammates, but there's no love lost when it comes to race day. They obviously want to beat each other. They try very, very hard. And when it comes to making a block pass, it doesn't matter if they're riding for the same team, does no, it? No, they don't care. They try, you know, they, they don't uh, deliberately try to hurt the other rider or knock him down or anything. That's, that's uh, very unusual. But Ryan Hughes is uh, known to be very aggressive, and he'll do what it takes to get around. Pichon, of course, won the final moto in Mount Morris, so maybe he likes moto number two, seems to get better starts. He went back to France for two weeks before this event and said, well, it was great, but the training is a lot different there. It was cool, and man, it's hot here. I hope I won't fade in the heat. Right there, picking an excellent line, gets underneath Ryan Hughes. He set that up. Ryan Hughes actually got all sideways in the part of the track. Apparently, they had watered quite a bit, and uh, it's just a, enough of a bobble for Pichon to pick a better line and cut underneath him on that off camber. And right now, Ryan looks like he's trying to get back by him, and he's going to do it. Great battle here for second place between the teammates on the Kawasaki. Back and forth, back and forth. This is the best 125 racing we've seen for a while. Tell us how this unfolded, David. Well, actually, this is after uh, Pichon had already made the move on Ryan Hughes. Ryan, he's a fighter. Usually when you get by a guy, you, you tend to think that's over and done with. Well, not when he passed Ryan Hughes. He'll come right back underneath Pichon right here and uh, get pretty squirrely in the process. But as I just mentioned before, he'll do what it takes to make his move, and he makes it stick. Ryan Hughes not afraid to take a line that no one else had tried yet today. He stayed on the throttle, and it worked for him. Ryan Hughes now going after our leader, Steve Lampson. As we look at the Honda Field Summary, Pichon, Wyndham, and Brown take up the top five. Tim Ferry and 10th will be right back. And Jeremy McGrath. I'm Ben Sheetwood, and joining me for today's Honda Riding Tip is Jeremy McGrath. Jeremy, a big part of winning is practice. What goes through your mind during practice? Well, I think I go out every time, make sure I wear all my safety gear. Uh, get warmed up, ride a few laps, then come back in, rest a little bit. Then I go out and really do some hard practice. I uh, practice on the sections that I might have had trouble with the previous race. And uh, then I think the third most important thing is, even for me, even for everyone, is to uh, definitely bring a friend in case something happens. Thanks, Jeremy. Winning and practice go hand in hand. Today's Honda Riding Tip, I'm Ben Sheetwood. 
Back at the front of the field, you can see that it's tight. We see that Keyshawn is tight there on Ryan Hughes, and in turn, Ryan Hughes is putting the pressure on Steve Lampson. The Honda followed by two Kawasaki's. Every single moto we have here in one. Oh, it looks like, yes, Pichon has gone down, lost the front end. He loses a position, but gets back up in fourth spot. Well, there's not really a berm in that corner. He was just trying to square that corner off and possibly uh, this is some loose stuff. And because he was trying to square, he was going across possibly some ruts and uh, just lost the front end. And again, making another mistake up at the front of the pack. Look at the fans cheering on their favorite rider right now. It looks like Ryan Hughes is having the towels being waved for him. They want to see if he can catch this man, Steve Lampson, our defending champion here at Bud's Creek, a guy who tore his knee up really bad and missed the full Sacramento round, which was his home race, but he's really come back strong. Well, Lampson's in an excellent position right here to take the overall win, and Ryan Hughes is just trying to make up for what looked like kind of a bummer for him in the first moto. He was in third, possibly could have uh, challenged for the lead. He was close enough and then had a flat tire. That's very frustrating right here. Close enough to challenge for the lead. They nearly go side by side. I had said earlier that Ryan Hughes tried a line that no one else had tried. We saw Steve Lampson go way to the inside on that turn. Look at this. Great racing. Let's see if Ryan Hughes can come to the inside. Oh, they nearly touch. Ryan Hughes with an aggressive move takes the lead here in moto number two. Well, I said before, didn't I, a couple of times, actually, that Ryan Hughes will do what it takes to get around. Not intentionally do anything uh, dirty riding, but as uh, Tim Ferry said, you have to get aggressive out there, and that was the same place he made his pass on Mike Brown in the first moto. Ryan Hughes, a guy who is a lot of fun to watch. Look at the height that he got off of that jump. Now he's out in front. He likes to charge. He likes to chase. We'll have to see how he paces himself with this kind of lead. He seems like he's drawing away from Lampson. One thing Ryan doesn't do is pace himself. This kid knows one thing, and that is go fast. He's at the top of the standings right now as we look at the Honda field summary. Lampson, Pichon, Brown, and Wyndham take chase as we look at the second five. Ederson, Deegan, Ferry, Reynard, and LaRusso will be back after this. Welcome back to Bud's Creek, Maryland. Jan Bikas, David Bailey in the booth, and Art Ekman in the pits. Number 43, Kevin Windham, is now getting pressure from number 101, Mikel Pichon. We saw Mikel fall earlier, but now it looks like he's regaining his speed. Well, this kid is bounces back from quite a bit, but he does cause a lot of problems for himself. I've seen him race in Europe in some Supercross events, and he's always fast. Never a question about that, but he's fairly inconsistent. He falls down and, uh, like I said, just causes a lot of problems for himself. Now look at this. Here comes Mike Brown, number 26. We know he's fast at this racetrack. He was leading for a while until he fell, got his leg trapped underneath the motorcycle, couldn't get it going. I would have to think that he'll have the speed to get by both these two guys. And look at this line by Pichon. This is the same place he made a move on Ryan Hughes earlier in the, in the first moto, and it works again on Kevin Windham. He sets that up in the corner before. He goes wide. That corner has been watered. We can't see that from our vantage point here, but it's been watered, and the guys that take the inside have to kind of uh, be real careful through there. He goes wide open to the outside, squares it, and just cuts him off on the off camber. Now Kevin Windham has to worry about Mike Brown. Mike Brown putting up the pressure, and he's done it. Mike Brown also works his way past Kevin Windham, who's trying to recover after spending a lot of this season being injured. That's too bad. This kid started off the Supercross season several times on the podium, and then the injuries began. Right now, he's trying to keep in touch with the leaders, but let's check in with this week's Suzuki flashback. You think the racing is exciting here in Bud's Creek in 95? You should have seen it in 94 as they come into the first turn of moto number one. A huge pileup, half the riders not able to get past the apex of turn number one. The whole shot, however, went to rider number four, Steve Lampson. But carnage was the order of the day as we look back through the pack. Riders getting close, and watch this one. Oh, face plant right into the very, thankfully, soft dirt there. Then watch this. Biggest crash of the weekend, Ezra Lusk. Thankfully, he's okay. Looks very scary for a moment. Ezra Lusk on the Suzuki somehow got back, and this man, Steve Lampson, won moto number one. In moto number two, Jeff Emig gets the whole shot, Steve Lampson in second place, and then these two battle side by side. First, Lampson comes through. Then Emig, 
starts to plan his way by to try and take it back again. Here he comes, gets the run on him on the downhill, but look at this. Lampson doesn't give up. They go side by side, handlebar to handlebar, all the way through the model. The fans are going crazy. Best battle they've seen here for years at Bud's Creek. Right here, Emig leaves the door open, and Lampson comes in there and rides right through it. But it didn't last long. You watch Emick pull a tearaway right here. New vision. And then Lampson makes a huge mistake on the downhill double right there. That hurt. That had to scare the heck out of him. And right here, he looks over his shoulder. He's still trying to shake it off. Let Emick ride right by. Jeff Emick goes to the front and wins moto number two. But it wasn't enough. He finished third in the first moto. Lampson finished second. Lampson takes the overall. In 1995, live, you see Ryan Hughes in the lead at the moment, trying to pace himself, trying to stay out front here in moto number one. He comes, oh, as soon as we say pace himself, he gets on the power too hard. Here comes Lampson through for the first spot. Second place, there goes Mike Brown. Ryan Hughes still doesn't have it refired. Oh, that was a tough one. And Jan, as I mentioned before, Hughes doesn't really have a pace himself uh, type mentality. He just goes for it and, uh, Occasionally pays the price right there. He just grabbed a handful of throttle. We'll get another look. Watch his foot on the ground right there. It gets stuck. Catches him and drags him to the back of the motorcycle. And when he gets drugged to the back, he runs the throttle wide open and the bike is squirted out from underneath him. Boy, it shows you the kind of traction these machines have once they get planted. <laughs> that was a wild looking crash. But boy, it paid off for this man right here. Lampson. There's Brown in second place. We're looking. There's Bichon. We still don't see Ryan Hughes. We're looking to see. There's Wyndham. There, there he is. So, man, he lost a lot of positions from the lead all the way back to, I guess, that would be fifth. So a pretty disappointing day for Ryan Hughes, who uh, looked like he had a, a chance to move inside the top three, but at least a third place in the first moto gets a flat tire. This moto, he's leading it. And a really kind of a freak mistake right there cost him four positions. So very frustrating. Steve Lampson getting stronger and stronger each moto. We saw in our Suzuki flashback that this guy had a great race last year. He was injured earlier, missed Sacramento, as we talked about. I think now he's showing he's really at full strength. Right now, Ryan Hughes, a uh, pretty aggressive rider, very tough. And if he didn't bend anything too much on the motorcycle, he should be able to get back up here and, and uh, possibly make up a few positions. I don't think Wyndham is running the pace that Ryan's capable of. We talked about Lampson being injured. Of course, Kevin Wyndham has been injured this year, missed much of the season, as we said earlier, in moto number one. And really, Ryan Hughes ought to be able to take advantage of that. Ryan Hughes has got to have a little extra adrenaline running after that loop-de-loop. -loop. Well, you can see right here that just the shots we get when you see these two riders together, Ryan's much more aggressive and uh, just attacking the racetrack. And uh, I don't know if that's going to last. I, I think he's in pretty good shape. But when you fall late in the moto like that, it just takes so much energy out of you. Kevin Windham from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's only 17 years old. So really, if this guy's running this kind of speed at this age, Yamaha really hopes he's going to be a star for the future. And I think Bob Hanna has mentioned before that he'd rather not see this kid peak too early and get burnt out later on. So they have a plan for this kid. And they just want him to steadily improve and gain confidence and not uh, burn himself out and go through too many injuries. Unfortunately, he's had a couple of those to deal with. But uh, he's a pretty smart kid, and he doesn't take any unnecessary chances. And right there, Rather than r try to ride a little bit over his head and hold off Ryan Hughes running a faster pace, he just uh, opts to let Ryan get by. Maybe he can learn something from Ryan. Bob Hanna has really enjoyed working with this young man. He says he really enjoys when a guy likes constructive criticism, likes to hear how he can improve, and likes to learn. A lot of these guys get to the point to where they figure at this stage they know it all. Kevin Windham certainly doesn't have that attitude. And what a great opportunity to learn from a seven-time national champion, Bob Hanna. Looking at the Honda field summary, we see that Steve Lampson's out front. Brown, Pichon, Hughes, and Wyndham round out the top five. The second ten, Pedersen, Reynard, Ferry, Sheik, two, has been brought to you by Honda, defending champions and holders of the past seven consecutive Supercross titles. Honda, come ride with us. Welcome back to the final lap of moto number two here at Bud's Creek, Maryland. You're looking at number 26. That's Mike Brown. 23 years old from Gray, Tennessee, had a great first moto, then faded slightly, but here, after a fall, he's all the way back to second position. And Pichon having a pretty good day, despite a bad start in the first moto, a crash in this moto, and a lot of mistakes, a 4-3 for the day, if he can keep it up on two wheels now, and uh, pretty consistent. I'm sure he's still going to try and close in on this man. He has him in sight. 
Mike Brown, who's won a couple of Supercross events this year, won Charlotte and Cleveland on the 125. Certainly, it's been a great year for Mike Brown. Definitely came on strong late in the Supercross series, having to overcome an injury, but he was really no match for Pichon. And no match for anybody today as this man, Steve Lampson, takes the checkered flag. We pan back to look for number 26, Mike Brown, in second place. We're looking closely to see how close. There's Pichon, definitely not close enough to go for second place here. So Mike Brown comes across in second, but not enough for the overall. The Honda field summary for moto number two shows Lampson, Brown, Pichon, Reynard, and Ryan Hughes came back for fifth place. Looking at the second five, you see Sheik, Ferry, Huffman, Pedersen, and Deegan rounding out the top ten. Well, Steve Lampson, uh, the great ones make it look easy. <laughs> it wasn't that easy out there, but you made it look like the first moto of the year down in Florida. Domination. Yeah, I felt pretty good at the start of the race. I kind of just mellowed out a little bit and uh, let everything settle out, and uh, it worked. And I, I rode better the last half of the race, I have to agree with that. And. Uh, I think that's where I won the race because I got away from them guys. How did you pace yourself though with no one really pushing the other way? Um, I just I tried to just stay as close as I could. Uh, I, I was watching my mechanic a lot and uh, he's giving me pit signals on my lap times and uh, I could tell if I'm falling off or going slow, you know. So I could also see where Mike was too and I just kind of paced myself him just to able to get away a little bit. So rhythm more important really than uh, jetting. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, well, that long of a moto, you got to have a, a, a good consistent moto. Can't be uh, going out there. First time, first few laps of the wide opening, throwing it away, so. Checking the point standings, Damon Huffman still hasn't won a moto. Mike Brown, Tim Ferry, Pichon, all closing in. Art Ekman has caught up with the second place finisher, Mike Brown. Well, Michael, it got hairy out there. I mean, uh, you were in second place, looking real clean, and all of a sudden, a little wobble here, a little wobble there, yeah. and then you got a battle on your hands. Yeah, I got the good start, got the whole shot, went to the far sweeper over there, and they wetted it really slick. I went there just a little too fast. My front end washed out. Got it up around eighth or ninth or so. And I just told myself I'm going to have to ride hard if I'm going to get up there. And I just gave it all I had. Got up there and then wrecked again over here, like coming in front of the spectators over there and slid it out again and got back up. I was about exhausted after that one there, so I just hung in there for a second. Mike Brown did take second place overall as we look at the Honda overall results, and that boosted him, as we saw, up to second in the championship. A seventh place overall for Damon Huffman. That killed him, took a lot of points away from his points lead. Kevin Windham, who ran into trouble in moto number two, slips all the way to 15th. Art Ekman has caught up with our third place finisher. McKelvin, Sean, you must be pleased, though, with your third place finish in this second moto. Uh, when you consider the fact that you went home for a couple of weeks off uh, to France and then came back, uh, did you get much riding in when you were in France? No, I rode a lot uh, at home, but uh, I did a lot of running and and bicycle. And I think uh, I feel better now than the second race at Sacramento, where, where I, I got a very bad, bad uh, result. And uh, now I feel better and better, but uh, I need to be consistent like this and I think uh, to be good at the end. But I, I would like to win some races. <laughs> the man who has won some races is Steve Lampson. Great day for him. Two years in a row here at Bud's Creek. However, Damon Huffman, our series points leader, had a terrible day, a seventh and an eighth, bad starts. However, still holds on to the points lead, but there's only five points separating the top four positions. For Jan Bikas and David Bailey here in the booth, Art Eklund in the pits, we'll see you next week at Southwick, Massachusetts.